What I'm doing in this video is continuing with this script, which was from a previous video where we created the connections, the straight sections and the plates where they connect. Now we're going to go back and see where these plates were created and create the hardware or the bolts that bring it all together. So let me show you the steps for that. And if you want to download the original script, you can go to the website capettidavid.com and you'll also see this script um, there. So check out the website if you can. And now let's jump into the tutorial. So now that we have this script, the cool thing about this is we have every single step that we've taken to create this design. So we can go back and trace back our steps to the point where we can get to how these circles were created. Now, when I look at the script here, we see that we have this B rep, which are two extrusions. Here we have the vector that extruded it. And then here we have the surface that they were extruded from. If we go back a little bit more, we can see that we also have these surfaces. So we have two sets that were joined and merged and these circles is one set of circles and here is the other set of circles. So now with these two, let's add the hardware here. Here's the thing on a previous video, I missed one step that can help a lot within this, this portion. And I'll go over that in a second, but we have the location of the circle and we have that located on this particular plane. So what we need to do now is take this and Instead of creating circles, we're going to be creating a polygon. The polygon is going to have six segments, so it could be a like a hexagonal bolt. So let's go here to segments. The radius is going to be the same, so we'll do we'll do one at a time. I click double clicked here on radius to get a relay. That way we can use this relay as our input for the radius and this plane as the input for the circles or for the polygons. So notice that we have created them here. Now we're going to be, so that would be for the bolt portion. So we're going to take this and move it up and extrude it in the opposite direction. The other thing we can do is make these plates a little bit not extruded as much. So we'll do just 0.5. And it takes a little bit because obviously we have a lot of geometry here. Mm. 0.05. So that is the amount that it's extruded. So we can take this polygon. We are going to create a surface at those polygons. Now we're going to be moving these surfaces. So we'll go to move this surface in which direction? Well, we can use amplitude because it will go perpendicular to the surface space. So we can use this as the vector and this vector input as the motion. Now we can set a value under the amplitude. So we'll do 0.2500. We have a few decimal points. And as we did in a previous one, well, we moved it halfway this way. Now we need to extrude it by the same amount by twice as much in the opposite direction. So when we do, when we say that opposite direction means negative and by twice as much means multiplied by two. So this vector will be multiplied by two and actually goes in the negative direction. We have these. So these become the bolts that will be subtracted from. So those bolts actually get subtracted from these. So the bolt length would actually be 0.1. See. And of course, we would have the screw in the middle and we can do something similar with that. So notice that we haven't done that to all of them. We've only done that to a few. So we need to do that again, but to the 
these, not just this, but this set up here. So we'll create this again. So we'll bring out the sliders here because those are going to be consistent. And we have this and then copy it again. Here's the difference. We need to replace the plane, the radius, segments are going to be the same. And actually the radius will be the same because the radius is the same for both of these. So we can use that same slider. Now let's replace the other ones. Let's go to the plane as the plane input. We'll do it up here. The radius is going to be the same. So the only thing we change is the plane input. So now we have these two sets or the complete set of bolts here. And we'll be doing the exact same thing, but with the screws here. So it could either be to one side or to the other side. Let's, let's do that. Let's create one more of these. Actually, we're going to have to create four because it's two sets per. So we'll take this and this and just copy. Actually, just thinking out loud here with this bolt is probably enough. But if you wanted to do a screw, it would be the same process. So let's let's do that. We have this for this set, this for this set. All right, I think I got this figured out. So now we're going to do the screws, which is the same thing, but a little bit longer without using polygons. But now that we have this, we'll leave this down here for the bolts. And we'll be taking these and extruding them. So I'll copy, actually I'll turn that into a surface the boundary surfaces from those circles and boundary surfaces from these circles as well. Now these are going to be extrude, uh, extruded perpendicular to the surface, but we need to make sure that they're extruded that way to basically away from the connection. And that will make it easier because you will have a hard time when you place them in here. This angle is getting smaller and it's more difficult to construct. So it would make more sense that the screw is out here and you bolt it down out on this side. Now we can take these surfaces, extrude them in which direction? Well, like I said, if it's going to be perpendicular to the surface, we use amplitude and surface as the base input. Notice how far they went and some of them actually go the opposite direction. So for this, it's actually pretty tricky because we need to do two different sets. We'll do this set that goes to the outside. Notice that we have to do copy this and do the other set, which is this one in the opposite direction, so negative. Sometimes, depending on how they're organized, you can also flip the direction of the surface. Now this amplitude value is going to be the same. So we'll do 0 0.12550, I don't know. Just a number that has a large set of decimal points. And now we can use these decimal points and be a little bit more subtle about it. Also, the radius of these circles needs to be a little bit smaller. So that means that, so I'm, I might confuse some of you, but it's good for some of you to see some of the workflow and the things that I go through when I create scripts. What happens is the original circle surface is a little, it's too large because that is the size of the holes for the plate. So they need to be a little bit smaller. So what we need to do is do the radius and then subtract or give these their own radius. How do we do that? Well, we need to copy these, these circles and give them a different value. So we'll do 0 0.1500. 0 
and we'll do the same for both of these. Why? And you'll see here, because these will become the screw holes, which are a little bit smaller. You can maybe make this slider a range of four, but then make the maximum be 0.5 or something. Okay. With these, now we can use those as the input. So rather than using the other circles, we'll use this as this first set, and this as the second set. Notice that they're smaller. And now we have the ability to control the length of it. And they're going to the outside, so we'll do 0.15. Okay, now at this stage, we can take these two and these two and put them together into one solid. Now we'll go here to merge, or here's the thing, we can do Boolean union, but I think if we just merge these into one set, this will become the output for the hardware and so that's a bit of the workflow i move things around and then bring them back and relabel them but the cool thing about parametric design in my opinion is that we have the ability to go back see how things were created look at all of our steps and ultimately add on to our design and we can apply this to any other surface that will make it really useful. If you want to download this script and the updates, check out the website competitedavid.com. I post videos every week where I share scripts like this and other designs for architecture. So make sure to stay tuned and get subscribed. And I hope to see you on the next one.